Scanf is one of the worst functions in all of C. So why do people still use it? I know people do use it because fairly often students of one of my C courses ask me why I don't use it. And my answer is because it's terrible. I mean, really, really flabbergastingly, cringingly bad. And yet people still use it. On some programming courses in some colleges, I'm told, students are encouraged to use it, which frankly is nuts. And in this lesson, I'll tell you why. I'm Hugh, and this is another lesson in my course on programming C using Visual Studio. In a C program, reading a string from the command line is a very easy way to corrupt your program. A function such as scanf makes it trivially easy to read in bad data, which potentially could even crash your program. Scanf is, in principle, the partner function to printf, and we use printf all the time. So why not scanf? Printf and scanf both use format strings with placeholders marked with a percent sign, and in printf, the actual values from a list replace the placeholders when the string is displayed. Percent %f is replaced with a floating point number, percent %d with a decimal integer, percent %s with a string, and so on. In scanf, the placeholders are replaced with values read in from the system prompt. In fact, the data is read into an address, which is why the variables are preceded with an ampersand. That's all except for string and array variables, where ampersands are not necessary, though some people do use them, and that's because strings and arrays are addresses anyway, which I'll explain later in this course. Scanf lets me read in multiple bits of data of varying data types, which sounds great, but in fact really isn't. In order for Scanf to work correctly, I have to be 100% certain that the user will enter the correct number and type of data items. If the wrong data is entered, the program will produce the wrong results. Now, look at this program here. I'm prompted to enter a product name and two floating point numbers. So let's do that now. Cornflakes 5.2. And all is well. It just does the calculation as I'm expecting. Let's give it another try with something else. So this time I'll enter Bran Flakes 6.2 and ah, so what's happened here? All right, let's have a look in the debugger. What's happened is I've accidentally entered a two word product name. So you can see that here. If I hover over product and uh, examine it, you can see that it's got B-R-A-N and it's added a null character at the end, the string terminator. That's because I entered, if I show you the system prompt again, here you can see I've entered two words, bran space flakes. So bran has been assigned to product and the flakes, the second string, an assignment was attempted to be made to the subtotal variable, which is or should be a double, that's percent %lf, which is the way to read in a double using scanf. And that's obviously very, very wrong. And, um, well, everything's been messed up. OK, so maybe you think this is my fault for carelessly entering the wrong data. But, of course, in a real-world program, I can't assume that the user will always enter the data I'm expecting. It's my job as a programmer to make sure that accidental mistakes like this do not occur. Clearly, then, this is an extremely error-prone way to get input. But that's not the only problem with scanf. Another potential problem is that it lets you read in and assign to a variable more data than you've reserved or allocated for that variable. Now let's see an example of this. And so I'll enter my first name. And let's assume I've got a short name, say I'm called Hugh Hill. All seems to be well, no problem. So it appears my program is running okay, but actually my surname isn't Hill, it is Collingbourne. See if that makes any difference. Yeah, seems to be okay. Ah, but what's going on back here? So although the output seems to be correct, Visual Studio is showing me the error message 
runtime check failure and it says stack around variable last name was corrupted. So why is that? Now, currently I've compiled this for 64-bit. Uh, Let me just stop it here. So x64 and with the debug configuration, as you can see up here. And that's generally fine for program development. But let's see what happens if I compile it for release, uh, which is what I do when compiling the final version that I'd want to send out into the world. Let's see if that changes the behavior at all. Again, Hugh and my surname, Collingborn. And this time you can see the results are completely wrong. So that should be saying, hello, Hugh Collingborn, but some of the characters in my surname have overwritten the characters from my first name. So when I compile this with the debug configuration, it looks as though the program works okay. But when I compile it for release, it's obviously not okay. It turns out that the debug configuration, in effect, adds in some safety measures that stop certain errors from occurring. Incidentally, other configuration options can also change the behavior of your program. For example, compiling for 32-bit, that's x86 instead of 64-bit, x64, may also change how your program works. In some cases, bugs like the one I've shown may seem to go away in some configurations. Don't be fooled, they don't go away. They just may not be obvious right away, but they can still cause problems. So what is the problem here? It turns out that this is an example of a common, a very common programming bug that can occur in C programs. It's called a buffer overflow. And I'll have more to say about that in the next lesson. For now, bear in mind that the scanf function is very prone to buffer overflows. And what's more, as we've seen here, when you are debugging your programs, it may even seem that there are no buffer overflows. But then when you send your programs out into the real world, having compiled it for release, a buffer overflow occurs. Then the users aren't happy. And it's up to you to find bugs that don't even show up when you're debugging. Incidentally, Microsoft considers scanf to be so unsafe that it won't even let me compile a program that contains scanf unless I put this special hash defined symbol up above the code. If I comment that out, this is what happens. Okay, so the warning recommends using another function, scanf underscore s. If you go to Microsoft's online documentation, you'll find all kinds of advice on how to make scanf safer, plus suggestions for various alternative functions, which in principle are more secure, less bug prone than scanf itself. In fact, if you use other C compilers, you may find that they too recommend alternative functions, but these won't necessarily be the same functions as the ones recommended by Microsoft. And if you hunt around on Google, you'll also find lots of advice from programmers on how to avoid some of the problems associated with scanf. But here's my advice. Just don't use scanf. It's quite simply more trouble than it's worth. Now, to understand why a simple thing like reading in a string from the system prompt is so error prone in C, we have to delve quite deeply into the computer architecture. That's what I'll be doing in the next few lessons. But I warn you, this is going to get pretty technical. We look at memory and addresses, buffers and buffer overflows, the stack, stack corruption, and a whole lot more. This is really important stuff. So even though reading strings from a prompt may seem at first sight to be quite trivial, it isn't. At least not if you want to understand what's really going on. In the next lesson, I'll also explain the inner mysteries of buffer overflows. Thanks for watching. To be notified whenever I upload new lessons, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. To follow this course in order, bookmark the playlist which is shown under this video.